Hello guys, I'm Nazim Hassan and today's topic is related to 5G MIMO antenna array design along with a special parameter called Total Active Reflection Coefficient or in short we call it TARC now, This parameter was introduced in 2005 Professor Ramat Sami of UCLA and his doctoral student shortly developed this parameter in 2005 and since then, it's playing a vital role uh, in the analysis of my antenna array design. And today's lecture is also partly related to 5G technology, 5G antenna especially. We all know that the year 2020 will mark the commercial launch of 5G around the world. And Within this timeline, we already have some idea or concepts issued by some authorities that at which a spectrum this 5G will operate. At this moment, we have the guideline and it says that it will operate in measure to a spectrum. The number one is sub 6 gigahertz spectra and another one is in millimeter wave spectrum. As for the millimeter wave spectrum, we may have 28 gigahertz or 38 gigahertz or even 60, 70, so or even 80 gigahertz. Basically, it's speculated that 5G would operate in millimeter wave spectrum, although there is significant path loss in that frequency compared to the microwave frequency. And this is, uh, I mean, uh, right now, 3G, 4G, or LTE, they're working in lower microwave region, less than 6 gigahertz of frequency spectrum. But for the 5G, we need higher spectrum because we would like to have wider bandwidth and in order to satisfy the voluminous data uh, demand from the user we need uh, a lot of untapped spectra which is located in millimeter wave frequencies because this spectrum is already occupied by the current 3G, 4G and LTE networks anyway so one of the key features of 5G antenna is MIMO. It's expected that 5G antennas will exploit the MIMO technology. So why MIMO? The question arises, right? What's so special with this guy? So it's all about this C, the letter C. The letter C is basically denoting the channel capacity of the uh, modern communication system. And the famous Shannon Hartley theorem says the channel capacity depends on the bandwidth of the channel B times log of 2, 1 plus signal to noise ratio units in bits per second. So, how do you increase the channel capacity, the data rate, in plain words? First, either we can increase the bandwidth of the channel, sometimes it's not possible due to the resource limitations, or we can work out on the signal to noise ratio. So these two options are available in order to increase this guy, right? Now, employing multiple antenna technologies or multiple antenna elements gives us some edge on this guy, signal to noise ratio. How? Imagine a single antenna system. You have on one antenna that will transmit and receive the signal, and there is some multiple propagation and channel fading conditions which are uh, which will deteriorate the signal to noise ratio. Now, if we employ more than one antenna simultaneously, both I mean, all the antennas will operate simultaneously, receive the signal, transmit the signal independently of one another. Now, what will happen? The channel fading or the multipath propagation, this will get reduced. And whenever this gets reduced, we have the improvement in SNR. 
And that's why MILO is so vital in order to achieve the uh, channel capacity, the higher channel capacity in modern wireless communication system. And um, so uh, for the MIMO antenna, we call it the uh, total or the full name of this uh, abbreviation is multiple input and multiple output. So we have multiple antenna inputs or the receiver antennas and we have multiple output antennas or transmitter antennas. So that's the motivation of using this MIMO technology and it is fundamental in the design of 5G antenna. So I was talking about this guy, TARC, right? But before diving deep into this parameter, I'd like to show you some practical demonstration. This is a 5G antenna that I designed a few months ago. It's a very small antenna, right? It will fit on your fingertips. So this antenna is operating in millimeter wave frequency, 28 gigahertz. And uh, I published it uh, in October in an international conference. And some other advanced works are submitted in a journal, which is under review at this moment. So this is not a MIMO antenna, this is a simple 5G antenna, but what about this guy? Do you see this? So there are basically two antennas in the same setup, and this has two ports, first port and second port. So there are multiple antennas, two antennas, so this is a MIMO antenna, a 5G MIMO antenna operating in millimeter wave frequencies. So this antenna can independently, and both of the antennas can independently work and transmit and receive signals. So it will give you higher data throughput than this one. Okay? Anyway. So I was talking about this guy, T-A-R-C. Why is it important? Let's know why is it important. We just saw the simplest case of minor configuration can be two antennas. It's a two by two minor antenna array system, the simplest case possible. And uh, so don't confuse it with four. This is not a linear operation. This is in sense, it's saying that there are two transmitter on the, I mean, TX antenna and RX antenna, two transmitter and two receiver antennas. So there will be another pair. This may be receiver antenna RX and this is TX. So two by two means this sense, not the multiplication sense, right? Anyway, so as I was saying, why TARC is so important in my mind in every design? We have these two antennas placed adjacently. That means the radiation field of this antenna is bound to interfere with the radiation field of this antenna. That means it's a two-port network, port 1 and port 2. So whatever signal or excitation signal you provide at port 1, this will also incur some electromagnetic interference at port 2. So the overall system response will be a different whenever we consider each antenna stand alone. Right? That means these antennas will talk to each other. They will interfere, try to interfere with each other. And in order to find out, in order to quantify this, how much or what degree interference is going on in the setup, we need this parameter, TARC, or Total Active Reflection Coefficient. This parameter is fundamental and will tell you that, that these two antennas are interfering with one another in this amount. And then you can take precautions, you can take measures after you know about the response of TARC of the MIME antenna system. This is extremely important in 5G MIME antenna design. 
So this parameter, I mean, of video lectures on this TRC is not available in the internet. That's why I am focusing this lecture on this TARC. Because whenever we try to write down a paper on MIMO, then we have to provide data related to this parameter. All right, so it's very important. Anyway, so let's, let's see what is the definition of TARC. So TLRC is defined or denoted by this group letter gamma and with the superscript T for total and the subscript A for active. And gamma is also the symbol for the reflection coefficient. So we, uh, in an overall system, we just say TLRC. And this is a ratio. Ratio of what? Ratio of powers. We provide powers to the antennas, and then antenna convert to, converts those powers into uh, useful information and throw it into a plane. Uh, I mean, into the free space as a form of plane waves, electromagnetic waves. Now, uh, if we have two antenna minor system, port one and port two, so we provide powers at port one and port two. So these powers are the input powers, or in other words, we call it incident power, and let's denote it by A. And uh, since there are two ports, so we will have two signals, A1 and A2. And the power of the signals, basically the square of the modulus of the signals. Right? For example, we provide a signal, excitation signal A1 and A2. And we take the sum of the powers, and this will provide you the total incident power. All right. And you take the square root. This is the definition: the square root of the incident powers. Now, all the powers that you provide will not be radiated. Practical systems they are lossy, and in the antenna system. We have conductor loss, dielectric loss, and also the polarization losses as well. And this will, uh, uh, this will make this antenna to reflect some of the signals that you provide. And that is the wasted signal there, uh, I mean, that is not radiated. So not all the signals will be radiated, some of the signals will be wasted, and we denote the signal as B, B1 for this antenna and B2 for this antenna. So in our engineering, we call this wasted signal, or the lost signal, reflected signal. So we uh, take the power of the reflected signal in the form of these squares, and we take the square root. So this is the definition for TARC. It's the ratio between the square root of the reflected signals and the incident signals. Now, this is just for 2x2 two two antenna systems, but there may be 10 antenna systems, 15 antenna systems. So we can generalize this equation and we can symbolically modify this equation as a form of the i square. i varies from 1 to n. n is the total number of antennas in the MIMO system. In the same manner, we will generalize this equation and let's say i equal to 1 and vi and this is the square root of the definition. Nice. So this is the defining equation of TARC. Now we understand the definition, right? All right, there is a problem with this equation. The problem is the antenna engineers, practically, they do not uh, deal with power when they do measurement in practice. In measurement or in even in a theoretical calculation, we always talk about scattering matrix. 
This is the versatile matrix that can define any microwave system, uh, whether it's a filter, resonator, antennas, any you name it. Any microwave device or network can be defined in terms of its scattering matrix. But this equation does not contain any its parameter or its scattering matrix element. So during the time of calculation, you will face a lot of problems. You cannot just uh, calculate the powers and take the ratio. No, it's not that much simple. But in terms of S parameter, the calculation will become very easy. So our next goal is to modify or is to derive an equation of TARC in terms of S parameters only. All right. <clears throat> So let's consider our 2 by 2 line system. <coughs> and this is our transmitter array. All right. And then you have another receiver antenna array. This is also our 2 by 2 minor antenna system. Two antennas. And in between of them, you have the channel, which is free space. And free space can be mathematically modeled by Gaussian random variable because it's a fading channel. Now, this is a two-port network, so we have port one, port two. You excite the port one with signal A1 and you excite at port 2 with the signal A2. You are exciting simultaneously. The both ports will be excited simultaneously with these two signals. Their magnitude may be same but their phase may not be exactly the same. There should be some difference. It's bound to happen. And let's denote that A1 can be written as the magnitude from A0 times the phase of the signal is Ej theta 1. This is the phase, the phase of notation for this signal. And in the same manner, we take the magnitude. It's the same magnitude as A1, but its phase will vary. Let's take it theta 2. So that means there is a phase difference between these two ports. And the phase difference is theta equal to theta 2 minus theta 1. All right? Now, when we excite this minor antenna, we have this phase difference uh, existing in between the ports. This theta will further be modified when it will travel along this free space and the signals will be captured by these two antennas. So here, at this point, theta will never be same as theta. It will change to some other value. And we are curious to know, to understand mathematical relationship between the theta prime and the TARC. Because we would like to uh, find out a modeling uh, between the theta prime and TARC so that we can take precautions and this phase difference will incur some changes in the minor antenna system. And to quantify those undesirable changes, we need to find out the mathematical relationship between the TRC along with this theta prime, or the phase difference in simple words. So that's why we want to find out uh, the equation of TRC in terms of S parameter and theta. All right. This is our goal. So let's derive this equation. A moment ago, I mentioned that any device in microwave engineering can be characterized by its scattering matrix. This is a two-port network of microwave device, the transmitter minor antenna array. So it can also be characterized by S parameter. So let's write down the equation for this device. Uh, 
the equation will be the reflected signals B1 for this antenna and B2 for this antenna. And then you will have this scattering matrix, it's a two by two matrix because there are only two antennas. So here is one, two, S2, one, and S2, two, multiplied by the input signals or the incident signals. So this whole equation will characterize this microwave MIMO antenna system completely without any loss of generality. So we can expand this matrix system. We can so write down B1 equal to S11 times A1 plus S12 times A2. And we can also write it B2 equal S21 times A1 plus S22 times A2. So we expanded these two equations from this matrix. And we can replace the value A1 and A2 in this equation. Uh, I mean, we have this value already, right? So we can just plug in there S11 A0 e to the power j theta 1 times S12 A2 A0 times e to the power j theta 2. Now, theta 2 is basically nothing but theta plus theta 1. So we can replace theta 2 and write it theta 1 and j theta. This one is a1, this one is a1. So we can replace these values with a1 and also here. Now, very simple, you take the A1 common. The common terms is A1, S11, EJ theta. This is for B1. Let's start it, because we're going to use this equation a moment later. So we found the equation for B1. In the same manner, you can also find the equation for B2. We can plug in the values A1, S21, A0, E, J, theta 1 from this equation. And in the same manner, A2 can be written as A0, E, J, theta 2. Again, theta 2 means nothing but theta plus theta 1, so we can replace the value. E j theta, E j theta one and theta. In the same manner previously we did, this is a one, this is also a one. We can replace them. And a one E j theta. And a one can be taken as common. So let me take A1 as common. So this is the equation for B2. Let's also start. Let's put double star. So we found these two equations, B1 and B2. We can plug the values here, right? And then finalize our derivation. I will remove them because I'm not going to use it anymore. Only I need two equations. Yep. B1 and B2. These two equations will be plugged here. So let's uh, expand this equation first. And in the incident, in the incident ports, 
it can be uh, simplified to a1, both of the signals. And then we can plug in the value b1 as a1 s11 plus s12 ej theta whole plus s square. And then we have a1 s21 plus s22 ej theta square. And we have an overall square. And in the denominator, we have 2a1 for this square. All right. Now we don't need these two equations. We can further simplify this equation. Let's simplify it. You can take a1 common square, then we have uh, S11 plus S12 e to the power j theta. And then we have the second term right there, S21 plus S22 e j theta the square. In the denominator, we have this term. So it's very clear, right? This one and this one will be cancelled. And we can directly delete it from there and here. All right, so this is the final equation that we are seeking. You can see there are only s parameters in this equation and the variable theta. So this is a better and practical equation that can be used in the calculation of TARC of any practical MIME antenna design, uh, including 5G MIME antenna. Now, in this equation, if you see very carefully, we have the s parameters and then only one variable, theta. We can get this information, these S parameters from the simulations from CST or HFSs. So we don't care about these parameters. They are available already from the simulations or the measurement. But what about theta? Theta was the phase difference between the excitation signals. So due to the random phase, the response of the TARC will also change. So each time there will be a phase difference between the excitation signals of your MIME antenna, TARC or the system response will also change. And we are interested to know that how much change this TARC undergo, undergoes whenever we have a variation in theta. And we can plot this information in MATLAB very easily, but how? So this is our final equation. We are trying to plot it in MATLAB. So we have this S parameter data from simulation, but in MATLAB, we can declare theta as a variable and then sweep theta from value from 0 to 180 degree. With the step size maybe 30 degree or 45 or 90, depending on your need. Now for each sweep, you will have a different uh, TRC curve. And TRC would be observed in terms of or, or with the frequency response. So we will have a curve, a set of curves in this fashion. It is f axis or frequency axis, and this is the TRC in decibel. For example, for the first sweep, theta equal to let's say 45, you may have a TRC curve like this. 
theta equal to 14.5. <coughs> for the second swing, for example, 190 degree, the curve may go like this, theta equal to 90 degree. And for the third one, the curve may go like this, theta equal to 180 degree, whatever. So from this set of curves, it tells you that the overall bandwidth of the system, the minus system, will change how much, right? The variation of TARC with respect to the variation of the phase difference between the excitation ports. And this is very fundamental to understand because if you must know it, you can take precautions, you can take measurements, you can take also, uh, employ several techniques to suppress this uh, mutual talking or the mutual coupling between the internal elements in minor system. Now the value of TLRC can vary between 0 to 1 in linear scale, not in decibel scale. It's a linear scale, although this is decibel in plot. Anyway, this is the ideal case. If the value of the TLRC is 0, that means all the signals you provide will be radiated. So that's the ideal minor antenna system, but that is not practical. Every, pra uh, every practical system has some loss. So if your uh, uh, TRC is closer to one, the more uh, the closer to one means the worse. So that is the worst case. In worst case, you will have one. So we try to keep the value of TRC as low as possible. All right. And some people use another parameter called envelope correlation coefficient or ECC denoted by rho. There is nothing wrong with this parameter. You can use it, but there is one condition. You can use it for highly efficient antennas. If your antenna is, for example, your efficiency is greater than 90%, or 80%, then there's nothing wrong with it. You can use ECC. But to remain in the safe side, and since TLC provides you more, more comprehensive information alongside the variation of theta, so it's better to use TLC plot in your research papers or any, uh, any other technical reports. So thank you very much. I hope now you understand the role of TLC in my maintenance system design and especially in 5G my maintenance system because in 5G we do need to employ minor technique and when you design the my maintenance system obviously TARC will come into play. So there are other many antenna engineering tutorials in my channel, YouTube channel, so you can check them out. And if you would like to see more lectures like this, you can uh, request your preferred topic, and I'll try to give lecture on those topics. Uh, thank you very much for staying with me.